Now to Latin America, where major currencies are facing a rout. Three of the region's most traded bills hit record lows this week. The Colombian and Chilean pesos both fell to all-time lows Wednesday as a wave of anti-government demonstrations continue in the region. Brazil has avoided such political turbulence but also saw its currency headed for a record low. The central bank was forced to intervene for the third time in two days. With Argentina's currency struggling too, the Mexican peso is the only major Latin American currency to gain against the dollar this year. Joining me now from Dubai is Justin Carrigan, Bloomberg's managing editor for Global Emerging Markets. Uh, Justin, great to have you with us. So this does seem to be endemic to Latin America, but there are different causes here. We need to distinguish uh, between different currencies. So walk us through the political turbulence and the impact of that first. Well, the impact is clear that the markets are not liking this at all. And we've seen, as you mentioned, uh, uh, three of the uh, South American currencies going to record lows this week. The uh, Chilean peso, the Colombian peso and the Brazilian real um, the day before yesterday. Um, what we have is a diverse um, set of circumstances. There are some commonalities. If you look at, for example, uh, Colombia and, and Chile, where it's mostly about austerity, it's mostly about uh, government um, uh, attempts to, um, to shore up uh, fiscal uh, uh, balances and so on. Um, uh, Brazil is rather different. We've really got a, a sense that uh, interest rates are headed ever lower in a very low growth environment. And obviously that's not good for the real. But if you look at some of the comments, people are now talking about maybe a turnabout uh, for the real uh, in in coming weeks uh, but at the moment it's not looking uh, very good at all in fact uh, uh, the three uh, worst performing currencies in emerging markets anywhere this month are all Latin American yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you disting, uh, distinguished Brazil there, Justin, because, of course, earlier this month we had, for example, PIMCO and BlackRock quite upbeat on the growth and reform agenda. You know, some of the takeaways were that troubled times in Latin America weren't really dulling Brazil's sheen. But is there a danger to um, emerging markets uh, in general, maybe even more broadly than Latin America, if investors lump these countries together, or will it stay localized to Latin America? And who's likely to suffer the most if investors start to see this as a regional rather than a country by country issue? Yes, that's a very good question. I think at the moment it's safe to say we're not, we're not there yet. But of course, the longer it goes on, the more, if you like, negative uh, negativity uh, it adds to the global backdrop but clearly what's going on in in China and Hong Kong specifically and how that's now potentially going to impinge on the trade talks between the US and China are a much bigger factor in in what's going on globally but if you've got you know other pockets of, uh, of um, you know market turmoil going on in other emerging markets then that's not good either as far as the who's going to suffer the most you look at the most liquid markets probably and uh, we're talking about uh, South Africa um, you mentioned Mexico which has been large, largely exempt from the um, you know any of this so far so it's very much a South American rather than a Latin American um, notion at the moment. Um, uh, and obviously the weaker Latin American um, credits themselves. We've seen um, you know, how Ecuadorian bonds of sh yields have shot up uh, in the past week or so, beginning to come back a bit now. But it shows that level of nervousness there is out there.